Hey guys, it's Vanderbosch here. Um, a couple months ago when I was doing my front sway bar bushings, I thought that I would take off all the uh, brush guards underneath the van and the air dam, get it sandblasted and repainted because it was starting to look a little old and rusted. Um, unfortunately, as I was tanking it off, I, I, right away I knew it was the metal was pretty thin. I went and got it sandblasted anyways. And... I mean, the metal's so thin that the sandblast went straight through it. So, I mean, I could try to patch this stuff up. I could try to fix it. But, honestly, I don't know if it's worth it. I mean, especially with how flimsy this is. I mean, it's, it's not very sturdy. So, I mean, this piece, I, I, I mean, I, I, like I said, I could try to fix it. But I think it's pretty much toast. I don't really want to reuse it. Um, the main, I guess mount that comes off the van that the the air dam connects to that's in pretty good shape but it's in good shape because it was it was thick to begin with so this could have been reused but like i said everything around it was already kind of falling apart uh the piece that's a little bit further underneath the van if you look at the edges the metal's all cracked up it also has holes in it from the sandblast so if i hold it up against the light like I, I mean, it's not the sandblaster's fault that there's holes all over the place. This metal has just been old. I mean, it's been sitting there for how long, kind of taking the elements. And I mean, it's, it's reaching the end of its days. So I tried to get it sandblasted. As you can tell, I was going to start repainting it. But after getting it back from the sandblaster, I kind of thought, well, let's look online to see if there's some other options. So I'm probably not going to try to refurbish these. I mean, maybe I'll repaint them, maybe not. Uh, but what I did end up finding is, and I've mentioned this in previous videos, is the Delica Works uh, Bash Guard. I mean, so let me grab, just to explain how this works. Where the Delica had kind of a two main piece system, Delica Works kind of has one giant piece. Now there's separate brackets that come up to mimic this spot right here, uh, but the thickness alone is absolutely insane. And if you go on their website, I mean, they have a story about how much kind of weight this can take. But first of all, I can almost not lift it, but it is thick, very thick. Um, I'll have the link to their website and they're uh, in the description, so you can go check it out. Um, it comes with this piece, which is kind of, this is, this piece will kind of replace the main metal here. Um, these brackets here and here, they have uh, replacement ones with all the hardware that comes with it. Uh, it also comes with a new air dam. Now, comparing the air dam, the air dam's not as thick as the underbash plate, which it doesn't have to be, but it, it's a lot thicker than the stock. Like I can't, get, this doesn't wobble like the, the, the stock one does. And like, it, it might, it's probably just because of how old the stock one is, but this is all really thick pieces of metal. And it makes me feel a lot better that this is underneath the van protecting things versus, you know, some worn out rusted pieces. Um, additionally, which I do not have on the van right now, is like an oil pan protector. Um, I'll show you where this goes and I'll post some pictures from their website just to get a idea of how and where all this fits. But this, I mean, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice, but it's not light. It's, it's heavy duty stuff. Um, so it comes with all the hardware. I'm gonna put it on. Hopefully, I don't remember. I know there was a few times when I took this off that I had to re-tap some of the holes. So we'll see if I run into some issues. Um, I might have to retap something or get some different hardware, but I'm going to take these nice brand new pieces and replace the old, old stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay. Well, I'll get to going. I'll put it on and we'll, we'll see where we go from there. So excuse my, uh, bad drawing depiction but i tried to i wanted to lay out the hardware so i know what i'm dealing with um so this right here i kind of did a rough 
shape of this in this position. Um, uh, and then I didn't draw the oil pan as big because that one's a little bit simpler. It only had four pieces of hardware. So all together, this is the hardware that includes, include, included with this package. Um, I include the washers <clears throat> or the nuts in this list, but as I go through it, you'll kind of see what requires a nut and what requires the washers. Basically, if it has a nut on it, it has two washers on it. Um, if it's using an existing um, threaded hole that's on the van, it only, it only needs one washer. Uh, so the oil pan guard that's near the very back uh, is going to require four 12 millimeter. The shorter ones is, I think they're five inches long, five eighth inches long. And you'll just need the uh, washer. Um, the very back of the main guard, which is this piece, the, those, the, the two holes in the way, way back, um, you'll have two 12 millimeter inch long on either side. And then a 12 millimeter, one and a half inch long in the center. So that's like the longest one. Um, and that's in the back center. Then if we move forward a little bit, this is uh, the two pieces that'll be mounting the air dam up. Um, obviously I can't 3D draw the air dam here. So uh, really the, uh, this hardware, this, 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 these two, they're just uh, the bolt with a washer. Um, so those are the 14 millimeter, three quarter inch. Um, I kind of say that right there. Then you have some other pieces that are holding the air dam to the main bash guard. Those are two 14 millimeter, three quarter inch longs. Um, these ones will require a nut, so it'll have two washers on it. Uh, and then the brackets that go on the sides, these will mount uh here and then here that kind of go up into the van those are using the longer 14 millimeters those are the inch and an eighth and you'll need two of those um so it's just one washer on these because they're using some threaded uh mounts with which is on the van so that's two 14 millimeter um inch and an eighth for this side and then two for this side um I mostly just drew this up for my own, I guess, sanity, so that when I'm putting this together, um, I knew what went where. Uh, I might try to maybe draw in CAD or paint or Word or something a better drawing, so you guys don't have to stare at, I guess, this. Um, if that comes, I'll, I'll just kind of uh, walk you through that versus this, because it's not necessarily the easiest to see how everything is put together. Um, it does, one thing I'd like to note is it does look like we, there's, uh, two, where this goes, there's already two kind of bars that are coming across and it looks like you, we, we have to take those bars off so that this can replace it. So when I get to that, I'll show you guys how that's done. Um, other than that, I mean, all the hardware came I, pretty good, I think. Um, I'm going to go try and put this all on. Um, I'll be using some of this if it focuses. It's like medium strength perma. I, I'm just going to put this on all the bolts. So if I do have to replace something in the future, I can take these off fairly easy without them being that corroded. And really, I mean, all you really need is a 12 millimeter and a 14 millimeter wrench. Uh, and then I think you can get this pretty well done. So um, I guess I'm going to hop underneath the van. It is a little cold. Um, I kind of wish I wore more of boots. I'll show you what the outside looks like. It's, I mean, it's winter, so it's a little nicer today. I think it, I think it's like 30 degrees Fahrenheit ish. So we'll see how long I last out here before I decide to kind of take a break, but we'll get that on and I'll keep kind of updating you guys if I run to anything else. So the first thing I went and installed on the skid plate was the side mounting brackets. Um, and these get mounted to either side underneath the van. Um, at first, I kind of went through and tried to install the air dam and the air dam brackets. Um, these have like a flatter side to them. And they kind of go one here, one here, and then the 
air dam. Mounts kind of like this and attaches to those brackets. Um, so I thought I could do put all this together and put it underneath the van. There's a few things that you run into right away. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that this kind of has a flare out at the very top end. Um, this needs to go around your steering rack and a few other things. And this is already pretty heavy. So trying to feed the skid plate up underneath the van while kind of like threading this up, I found it kind of difficult. Um, on top of that, these brackets when they are installed, um, so if I just set this right here, if it would stay, yeah, there you go. So your air dan comes up like this. The front sway bar actually ends up coming in here. So you can't have these mounted yet. You have to put this, the main skid plate up first and then put these mounting brackets on the other side of your front sway bar. Uh, so really this is all you can have on the skid plate. Uh, I got some extra help today because uh, it was a little bit difficult using like a car jack and trying to line everything up. So we're gonna see if we can get some of these, uh, some of this stuff mounted up and then uh, go from there. Um, I left the oil pan for last and that's mainly because that seemed like it was a pretty easy uh, add on. So I don't think I need as much help, but I will need help with this because of how heavy it is. So yeah, like I said, just the side brackets. Don't put the air dam on it or the air, air dam supporting brackets because it ends up becoming kind of hard to uh, get past some obstacles up from underneath the van. So we're going to get up under there and get this uh, attached. One thing that kind of made my life a little bit easier is um, a lot of those threaded mounts underneath the van are pretty old and corroded and rusted. So I have some of these taps. This is a M10 by 1.25 and an M8 by 1.25. I'm thinking these are the two that you would need to clean up the threads. Um, I just kind of went out and bought like a you know, something like this. It has a bunch of different uh, tools and stuff like that to clean up threads on both the bolts and in the, the, the threaded mounts underneath the van. So I'm not a hundred percent sure that these are the right ones, but these are the ones I use to clean up all the threads. And there's definitely a few of them that I could tell there is some give near the end. I think it's because maybe the bolt stock never went completely through the threaded portion of the mount. So some of the threads were open to like the elements for however many years. So I kind of cleaned those up and I think that'll help me out a lot better when I'm trying to fit the skid plate on. So just in case you um, didn't have a skid plate before or forgot where the stock mounting locations are, I figured I'd point um, some of them out. The first and easiest uh, mounting locations to see are this one right here and this one right here. Um, those will attach the main skid plate. If I crawl in a little deeper, you'll three, see three triangular kind of mounts um, up top, so here, here, and there. Um, those attach to the back of the skid plate. That's the furthest back point of the main skid plate. Um, and then those side brackets that go up into the van, they attach, if I can get in a good spot without blocking all the light, they attach, I believe, right, oh, Oh, this is not a really good angle. Let me get back under the, out of the room under the van. I can show you. Um, those two, the, the, the bracket that goes um, off the skid plate attaches to right here. If I move my hand out of the way, there's that hole right there. That is a threaded part. So that's that fork style part of the bracket will slip on there and there's a mirrored um, spot on the other side of the van. So those are the main locations um, for mounting the skid plate. I mean if you just took off the skid plate and you're swapping on the new one this should be pretty easy since you've already messed with those locations you know where they are but like for me it's been 
couple months since I took it off, so I kind of had to get under there and remember where those locations were. So now that I know where the skid plate's gonna get attached to, I'm gonna use that jack over there and slowly push it under, lift it up, and get it attached. So it's been a couple months since I took my last clip. Um, it was getting pretty cold, and I kind of shifted my focus, I don't know if you can see, to my Forester, did a few things on that. Um, but now I'm kind of coming back over here to work on that skid plate. I kind of have it exactly where I left it off before winter hit. Um, one of the things I ran into, and I kind of this is where I stopped at, was the differences between the new skid plate and the old skid plate in terms of those rear triangle mounts uh, that I pointed out in a previous video. If you can see, the mounting locations of the old style, they are kind of raised up. It's not one flat piece like the new one is. They had this angle kind of built into it. And that kind of matched up perfectly with how the mounts are in the van. The, the van mounts are kind of angled up. Um, so one of the things you'll have to do when installing this skid plate is the, the, the new one, move that to the side. The new one has a completely flat surface. So those triangle pieces you'll have to grab and kind of pull down. And the way I did that was I kind of grabbed, I used one of these, kind of gripped on them and then slightly bent them down. If I crawl underneath the van, I'll show you kind of the two the three spots that'll have to be bent. Um, let me get a light on. So this is one of the mounts right here, right there. So what I did was just kind of grab it like this. And with this giant lever arm, you're able to kind of bend it flatter. So I did that to that spot, to that spot, into that spot. I got them a, a little bit uh, more flat so that they can butt up against that flat plate a little bit better. If you don't do that, what I found is this one has a really big gap because these sides are kind of lower, this one and this one. So this had a big gap and you'd have to use a longer bolt and even then it kind of didn't line up right. So if you bend those flat, you should be good. Um, one thing I noticed though when bending those is some of the paint kind of chipped off. It was already rusted to begin with. I might paint that up, I might not. The rest of it's kind of rusted anyways. Well, we'll see where we go from there. Um, so I'm going to check to see if I bent it enough. I'm going to put the skid plate underneath here and raise it up and make sure that the bolts can come through and meet with the, the welded nut, nuts that are on the top side of this. And if it works, good. If not, I might have to come back under here and bend them down a little bit more. Um, so we'll see what I run into next. So after I got those tabs bent up, um, I, using the jack, kind of snug this up to the back mounting where you bent those tabs down. I loosely screwed in the screws there. I used some blue Loctite. Um, and then I pretty much put all the bolts in their spots, but loose. And the reason I did that is because a lot of these are not just straight up holes. They're kind of elongated so that you can line things up. So I got everything on loose and then I slowly went around and tightened everything up until everything was pretty tight. Um, so that seemed to work pretty good. It, that, bending those tabs down definitely helped out a lot. That allowed all of this to kind of fit into place. Um, the next part I'm doing, I don't know if you can see back there, is I'm getting the air dam pieces put into place. Um, the easiest way I've seen to do is to get these bottom mounts for these air dam brackets um, secured. And then um, once those are secured, put the air dam in place and then put the bolts on the top of the air dam. The issue with that is it's kind of hard to see and line up. So you're gonna have to kind of put yourself into some weird spots just to get that to fit correctly. It's doable, it's just uh, kind of a pain. So I'm gonna get those top parts mounted up and then I'm gonna go through and retighten everything down. So this skid plate was uh, made for both left hand and right hand drive Delicas. And Delicas have a bunch of other stock and non-stock things that um, 
they came from the factory with or people have put on. Um, I think in my case, this lower radiator uh, on this side uh, was it isn't present on some Delicas. So this kid plate didn't take into account these hard lines over here. Uh, so I had to cut a notch out so that these hard lines could pass through. Um, I was kind of worried at first and I might still weld maybe a little bracket that comes off here just to protect these a little bit more. But the combination of the brush guard and the skid plate, it would take a very specific entry point to actually hit those hard lines. So I think I'm good in that case. Um, and to get that cut right, I just kind of took it off, cut some off, put it back up, checked to see if I was good. And I did that back and forth until I was satisfied with how it turned out. Um, in addition, if you check back there, you see those rubber hoses that are kind of in the back. It's going to be hard for me to see. They're like right there, those rubber hoses. Those seem to rub on the air dam when I initially tried to install it. Uh, and it probably wouldn't be that big of a deal at first, but after a while, those rubber hoses will, you know, wear out. So on the air dam piece, um, I cut a notch out here for the hard lines from that radiator. And then I just traced, what did I end up tracing? I traced a circle out and just cut a good enough chunk out so that it's not rubbing on those rubber lines. But um, just depending on what kind of configuration, what you got from stock in the factory, you might have to make some modifications to your uh, skid plate as well. So I tightened all the bolts up um, and everything seemed to go pretty good. I got that top air dime on and connected to the brackets. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty solid now. There's not a lot of wiggle room at all. It's pretty much stuck there. I, I, I like how it looks and how it turned out. Um, like I said, those back air dam uh, bolts that are way, I don't know if you can even see that. Let me see if I can move the light. The ones, the top ones way back there, those are difficult to put on. But um, as long as you take it slow and make sure you don't cross thread it, uh, it's doable. So you can get those on. So this is the front skid plate. Uh, the last and hopefully the easiest part will be to now put on the uh, oil, tan, oil pan guard. If I move to the other side with the light. All right. Down here. Um, so that is stock. I had these uh, brackets that come across here and back there. Um, this new uh, piece of metal will replace these. So I got to take this off and the other one off. And then I can put the new uh, oil pan guard skid plate in place right there. Uh, ignore how much oil and coolant is back here. Um, I do, unfortunately, I don't know if I can get a picture of it, but you might be able to see some of the JB weld. I do have a crack block right now. Um, and it seeps, it doesn't squirt. I don't lose a lot of coolant, but a new engine is eventually gonna need to be, it's gonna, it's gonna need to happen eventually, but um, I'm gonna have to wait until the funds become in place to put a new engine in. But uh, that's a future video, future time, future me. Right now, I'm just gonna focus on this oil pan skid plate. So most of these bolts are pretty easy to get out, um, but before I put on the new oil pan skid plate chances are i'm gonna have to take the skid plate off again and i just want to kind of trace through the threads um, and clean them up a little bit so i have this and i'll, I'll just kind of like tighten it a little bit and then back it off and then tighten it a little bit more and then back it off and i do that on all these all the way through um and then i'll oh, let me take this one out just to clean up the threads, um, it's, they're old and the back sides on some of these were exposed for, you know, 20 some years. So it's nice to clean them up before you put some new hardware through. Um, just for anyone wondering, these ones I used in M8. I don't know if you can see that, see if I can focus. Nope. 
Nope. Uh, it's a M8 by 1.25. That seems to be um, a good die to kind of go through and clean up your threads. So here's the oil pan skid plate all put into place. Uh, the rear two mounting holes. Um, it takes a little bit to line those up, and there was a few times I thought I was cross-threading it, so just take your time with those back few. But this was pretty straightforward. Um, I do like the way it looks, and it is a little bit thicker than the, those stock rails that were coming across, so uh, I'm pretty pumped on that. And it still does have a hole for uh, um, oil changes and stuff like that, so you don't have to take off this plate every single time. I made sure to use some blue Loctite on everything, just so that when I take it off, I can take it off. And hopefully that'll help with any vibration loosening, but I'll still, after a while, come back through and make sure that none of these have loosened all the way off. I, I don't want to lose any of these plates, especially not necessarily for me losing them, but for anyone else that's running behind me, that would not be good for them. Um, so I am done with the skid plates. Um, now that summer is kind of coming along, I'll be doing a lot more. Uh, hopefully be doing a lot more videos in the Delica. Um, I do have a uh, EGR blanking kit I want to put on. Um, I think I have a boost gauge that I want to put on. Um, and I also found a three pod. I can't get in the van today, but a three pod instead of a two pod to, so I can fit those two in there. Um, other than that, I might make some maybe driving around videos. I... I mean, I guess let me know what you guys kind of feel if you guys have any suggestions on some things. Um, one thing I do need to go back and touch on is, so on a previous video, I went through and redid all the uh, um, door weather stripping and everything. One thing I haven't done yet is this window's weather stripping, the sliding door. So I'm going to try to find the part number on that, and that might be a video. So I don't have any leaks anywhere else now, but this window still leaks. It's this the act, It's not the sliding door, and that's the one I replaced. It's the actual window, and this is a fixed window. And it, it's more like a gasket compared to the other ones. Um, so I'll try to figure out that part number, and then I think that might be the next one too. So, But um, yeah, I mean, that's about it. Uh, Thanks for watching. I know it's been a while since I posted. I apologize, but um, hopefully I'll get back on the schedule since the temperature's back up. Um, so yeah, thanks again, and I'll, I'll see you next time.